my name is Cheryl Merrill. I'm the daughter of Buddy Merrill, who played uh, guitar on the Lawrence Welk Show from 1955 to 1974. And I just wanted to get a few facts out there about him because it kind of, it's very cringy to me that people um, are really over, uh, you know, um, overreacting to him being a, a, a guitarist on the Lawrence Welk show because, uh, I wanted to say that, um, the one who was really a great guitarist was his counterpart who played with him there, um, Neil Levang. I had no idea until yesterday. That he was, he, what a great guitarist in the industry, in the music industry. And all the respect went to him. And uh, when I hear people, you know, now, uh, on his, uh, recent interview, uh, before he died, uh, giving him, hi- my dad, high praise as a guitarist, I just wanted to say that I witnessed my dad's decline, uh, before he quit the Lawrence Welk show, I witnessed how cruel and abusive he was to me and how arrogant he was and how he did not care about me at all and in my, my future and how he did everything he d- he could just to make me someone he wanted to have to have ba- to make babies for him you know and he had no regard for me whatsoever he, and, and I'm just wanting to say that he was a fairly neglectful abusive dad. Uh, to me and my sister Melody, who died in 2001 at the age of 35 from um, bacterial meningitis, bacterial meningitis, um, and she had a really tough life. She didn't even go to high school. They didn't put her in high school. My dad was pretty, pretty damaging to his children and even his wife, who he rarely spoke with or. You know, a few times he took us out for vacations that he could afford. In the early 70s, we went to Hawaii, which was very nice. We went to Yosemite. We went to um, uh, drive up to Canada uh, in 1970. And my my dad was not realizing yet that he was going to be leaving uh, the Lawrence Welk show uh, because he he uh, just was claimed to be so tired that he couldn't do the job anymore. And he was only 40 years old. He had only been working since 1955. And he took a little two-year spin to the U.S. Army draft, and then he came back to Lawrence Welsh Show. So I wanted to say that I was born out of wedlock. Uh, when he was in, arm, in the Army, uh, he didn't want to marry my mother, um, but he was kind of coerced into it to please his grant, to please his, his, parents who wanted me to be their first grandchild. So, you know, I I just wanted to say this man was so distant as a father and a dad. He just wasn't there most of the time. And I always heard he and his wife arguing late at night with very angry um, fights. And it, it, can, it went on for years and years and years to the next home in Palos Verdes. We lived in Baldwin Hills, where the dam broke there in 1963, and our house was right below it and got washed away. So I don't know if they would have been the same uh, traumatized people had it not been for that. I don't know if, how they would have been different without that flood. I don't know how much that contributed to them having a bad marriage. But I do know that he re- regretted having to be forced into marriage with her because of me. And it was all, she took it all out on me. And she told me I came into the world unwanted, and it was just brutal what they did to me. They pretty much abandoned me when I was still living there with them and overlooked my awards. They didn't go to my banquet award for the orchestra, and um, they didn't even express wanting to, so I didn't invite them because they, I told them I'm going to this award ceremony, and they, they didn't express any desire to go. So I just didn't want to be rejected, so I didn't ask them. But um, like I said, my dad did not uh, come down to see me on my solo performances and my PVHS, my Palos Verdes High School qua- jazz choir that went to Montreux twice. I was sandwiched in between those years with only one year in the jazz choir. I had, I had never considered auditioning for their choir like I was completely oblivious to. Um, so I was a violist and I got an two awards in the high school there, one for the best freshman and the other one for uh, a USC 
uh, scholarship for their summer camp there. And my dad was just not at all, he wasn't paying for music lessons for me, even though the camp conductor, uh, Mr. Mountner, recommended that he do that. I was the most improved, he claimed, at that camp in the string playing section. And my dad did not get me uh, a teacher. And in fact, he just used me in order to get one of his Ben-Hur arrangements played there at that um, Wildwood Music Camp in uh, 1972, I believe, right before I entered high school. And my dad did not show up uh, to watch me perform that uh, and for my support as a violist. And uh, he, my babysitter was sent instead, this fat ba- babysitter who once babysat me a couple times, came with my mother as a support system to watch me. My grandparents weren't invited, even though they were kind of not too far in the area there of Wildwood. And I had absolutely no support uh, after that happened. Uh, my dad did not uh, do anything to support me after that. He stayed home when I had performances. I mean, he wasn't even working for Lawrence Welk, you know, and he wouldn't come to see me perf- sing or anything. He was a really abusive dad. He he would say things at the dinner table like, your shit don't stink. You think your sit- shit don't stink. He would say things to me like that. And on my 16th birthday, he would um, surprise me on my birthday, my sister, mother, and he were there at night uh, uh, in the evening. And they brought me down. They asked me to come down. And maybe there was this, this I don't know what was there for me. I don't remember what kind of cake, but it wasn't a very nice one. My dad took me to the ground and spanked me 16 times. And he stuck his fingers in my ears as he sat on my chest at first and then he turned me over and spanked me but he didn't have any gift to give me this was when I was 16 years old Okay, and they wondered why I wasn't getting good grades at Palos Verdes High School except in music they wondered why I was struggling they fought all the time they had angry violent fights and they'd even wrestle together in their fights I mean it was really traumatic my sister once came down from sleeping uh, like I, I just was so scared of them I stayed in my room all the time um, at night and my sister would say stop this or I'm going to kill she pulled the, a knife out of the kitchen drawer and said stop this or I'm going to kill myself you know, and, you know, what happened to my sister was just absolute unbelievable. She had a high IQ, my sister did. She was six years un- younger than I was. And I stayed away from the household after I left. My parents wanted me out of there as soon as possible. They just hated me. My mother once told me I came into the world unwanted, born out of wedlock. And by that time, they were just crippling me uh, as my dad had left the Lawrence Welk show. They could get away with it, they thought. So um, I left, and I did not visit them much. I wasn't invited or anything either. So I didn't visit them much, but my sister was going through a lot of a, a lot of abuse, apparently. She did not make it to high school. She did not go to high school. They just wanted her to be a baby maker for them. So they got her mar- married to this guy in the military. And uh, she ended up... Uh, they they ended up getting divorced because he said she was an alcoholic and he couldn't live with that anymore. So after that, she went completely downhill as a drug addict uh, with the other guys who gave her drugs. She married. She she had ended up having five children that was that were taken away from her by the state of California in the nineties and the um, the late nineties. And um, she ended up dying in two thousand one of bacterial meningitis. Uh, HIV, hepatitis C, and alcoholism. And it's, I've got to, as a witness, I've got to say it's because of the poor parenting of my sister. She, had, like I say, she had a high IQ. She loved to read, but she was not getting any parental supervision. It, there was a lot of neglect. My dad did not know how to raise children. He was very neglectful. He, he, he had no relationship with me. In reality, I, I, he really had no connection with me other than when I was seven years old and then after that it was all downhill. Um, so I'm just saying that he was, he was really a nightmare to have as a dad. And, uh, he caused me a lot of trouble in life and in the end, near his death, he would say bad things about me and my sister. He would say we were troubled. 
children. You know, well, well, I wonder why we were troubled children. I mean, my my uh, peer in orchestra in Palos Verdes High School was Sheila Rogers, who was a violinist, and I witnessed her. You know, after the year after I got. Um, spanked for my 16th birthday without any gifts or flowers or anything from anybody or my dad didn't do anything about you know giving me a gift for my birthday he just did that to me humiliating me they took a they took a film of it by the way um my dad recorded it on film and so they showed it you know he showed it to the family and were laughing at me so um i'm saying that um what happened was that uh I got out of that home real fast. I knew that my mother was was always going to be um, harassing me and abusing me and saying horrible, perverted things to me. And I, I just could not believe what I experienced because it changed a lot from when I was a seven-year-old just starting to play viola where they took me out to ice cream after my solo performance in elementary school. They took me out to ice cream. They never did anything like that after my performances ever like that again, nor did they, did he ever see very, he saw very few of my playing an instrument because I think I was an embarrassment to him. I wasn't a prodigy. You know, so I had a couple narcissistic parents in Hollywood who I witnessed ruined their children's futures. Just ruined and absolutely ruined. And the last thing I read in one of his comments on this video that he did called Buddy Merrill's interview um, that was released two years ago, um, one of the commenters there who had visited our house, I met this guy, had said at the end, he brought me and my sister into it by saying, uh, I'm sorry to hear that his his two daughters were so troubled. You know, just ignoring our my life or her life or whatever. Like, oh, his daughter's a, a nice singer and she's recorded her, her songs on YouTube. You should You should hear them. No, he wasn't doing that. And I met this guy. He was suggesting that both his daughters were troubled. Well, I wonder why we were troubled. I wonder why we were troubled. We were abused, neglected children. He put us on national TV in the 70s uh, with some non-rehearsal uh, rhythmic. Uh, we did not rehearse this, but for 15 minutes before he took us down for national television um, television access, he he put us for the Christmas show as the spoons, you know, the the spoons that you play on rhythms. I had never used those in my entire life, and we were expected to practice for 15 minutes and go on national TV to humiliate us. At that time, I was a singer, and I was a violist, and he did that to humiliate us. He was just a nasty man. He brought hard porn into the bedroom uh, that his children had access to, and he knew it. He did not lock it up. It was, it was full of you know those porn dictionaries where they describe all the perversions, including including pedophilia, and they put pictures there of it. Yeah, the the neighbors saw that. The neighbors across the street, uh, Brenda Daly, who was a future uh, district attorney for San Diego. Deputy Attorney for Sand. Oh yeah, and she saw that book when she was a, like twelve years old. That they wanted to see it. A guy was there asking me to see it, so I brought him up, upst- brought them upstairs, and show what was in my my parents' Buddy Merrill's drawers. Hardcore porn. Okay, he was really a nightmare. <laughs> 